Namaste everyone and welcome to a Wednesday Anchor Delight again. I stopped saying good morning because it's only morning in California and Hawaii. <laughs> so anyway, welcome to Wednesday. I think still, even in Australia it's still Wednesday, I hope. So today uh, we'll do our short lecture and meditation. And I was thinking about it. You know, we cover so many different topics from all ranges of topics from spirituality to money to relationships and it's interesting that oftentimes we think about it oh you want more we want more we want to learn more that's good perfect attitude now the question is how well are we absorbing and more importantly how much of it are we assimilating you know it's something to absorb assimilate is to go in now before any of that happens it first has to be transmitted to us right and so I'm sharing this with you because oftentimes we get so attached to, oh, there's this technique, there's this energy, there's this mantra, there's this crystal, there's this teaching. And people oftentimes don't realize there's such a thing as conductivity. You can have the most powerful source of energy, the electrical station. And um, you can have the best, I don't know, 8K TV, not even 4K, like real, real life. Or even more, it's like uh, virtual. You can, whoever, whoever's watching it, step out of the screen, whatever. But you have to realize you have a power source, <laughs> you have the receptacle, there has to be something that conducts it. And as far as learning and spirituality, that connectivity or conductivity it's resting on one thing, just one thing. Believe it or not, our attitude. Our attitude. So that's the reason why if uh, somebody teaches you a mantra and you think it's a bunch of bull <laughs> or a male cow, <laughs> mantra doesn't do anything for you. Somebody says, oh, by the way, if you wear this crystal, if you wear this and wear that, you know, it'll protect you or this is go." Then do anything. Part of it is because of you. <laughs> Just like some of us had religion shoved down our throat growing up. And guess what? Nothing happens. In fact, you rebel. Sounds familiar? So that's why one of the things we teach in the psychic protection class is as simple as this. If you have an object that's supposed to be blessed, quadruple blessed, kajion times blessed, it's useless if you don't allow it to come to your system, if you're not conductive. So let me just sh uh, share with you one of the things my teacher said. This from the small book he, well, Instagram, I forgot to flip it around. It's called Creative Transformation, the Golden Lotus Sutras of Spiritual Practice. By the way, the sutras, you know, in the Buddhist tradition and other tradition, the word sutra means thread. So sutras, let's say, oh, the Diamond Sutra, the Heart Sutra, whatever sutra, right? Different teachings, basically a string of, like a thread, a string of knowledge along a thread. That's one interpretation. So Golden Lotus Sutras basically is a term we just say the teacher's teachings are like, when your crown chakra is so open, so, divine, so much divine energy come down in inspiration teaching, uh, it's like something priceless as gold. Okay. In anything concerning energy, you must consider conductivity and resistance. If the mind is closed, energy cannot go in. That makes sense. To have inner understanding, you must have inner conductivity. Faith, devotion, surrender, or being conductive all mean the same thing. Now, let me clarify. You see, it depends on your culture. If you go to India, they have this word called um, Sharanagati. And you talk to a hundred Indian people, you say, ah, Shari Nagati. Oh, yeah, yeah, we know that. It's surrender. Surrender to God, surrender to your guru. Okay? That's pretty much you ask any uh, Indian person who's, let's just say, knowledgeable in Sanskrit. That's what I will tell you. And I remember my teacher, when he was teaching us about this, and um, just to kind of refer you, if you want to learn more, uh, if I can find it. Eeks. I don't have it here with me. Ah, here it is. <clears throat> Okay, inner teachings of Hinduism revealed. I think we taught a class on this a few months ago. We'll teach it again. So what happens is, 
when it comes to the tradition in Hinduism, of course, like with Christianity, Buddhism, Islam, Eb, Jewish tradition, every spiritual tradition have inner teaching and outer teaching. So the outer teaching in Hinduism, uh, Sharanagati, means surrender or spiritual surrender. Now, for some of you, what's wrong with that? It depends. If you have a technical mind, <laughs> right, or you've been burned by religion, suddenly your BS alarm goes, dee, 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 dee. <laughs> right? Some of you know what I'm talking about. All right. So that's why my teacher, also who, who was an engineer, a chemical engineer, said, look, 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 it's something like this. You have to understand that otherwise people become fanatical. By the way, <laughs> fanatical means what? They go nuts. They go crazy about go extreme on something. He said, you have to understand, it's not literally just surrender. That's why he said, faith, devotion, surrender, or being conductive all mean, mean the same thing. So to oversimplify it for you, it's what we talked about a few minutes ago. If you have a cable, this cable, at least based on my electrical engineering uh, background, it has to be conductive. The material has to be conductive that these uh, teeny tiny electrons <laughs> can flow through it. So they use copper. Now, if you use plastic, good luck with that. Right? And they say, oh, yeah, and, you know, expensive electronic equipment. They use gold. Because gold is more conductive than regular copper. And when my teacher explained, he said, look, look, it's as simple as this. Don't go crazy. <laughs> That's the funny part. You know, he'd be teaching class and people become, oh, so passionate. Oh, yeah, but God is this and whatever. He just goes, okay. <laughs> Don't get dramatic about it. So essentially, it's as simple as this. You have a power source. Be it God, your teachers, a saint, a church, temple, mosque, synagogue, whatever it is. The power source has that energy that you, the soul, have to absorb. But you have free will. So, if you think it's, ah, uh, this is nonsense, or I don't believe in it, or whatever, you can be standing in front of a spiritual nuclear reactor. Nothing lights up in you. Make sense? However, you could have a little battery, <laughs> but if you're so conductive... Even that little battery <laughs> could electrocute you. Make sense? So a lot of it has to do with attitude. So sharingati doesn't really exactly mean surrender. It means spiritual conductivity. Your ability to say, hey, this is truth. This is not truth. I will take the truth and fully absorb it in my life and assimilate it. That's it. So when you do it that way, it prevents people from being fanatical you see, if you look at the culture and you say the word surrender, most people in the traditional Eastern religions would say, yeah, I have no problem. I surrender to my teacher. I surrender to God. I surrender this, surrender that. Because the culture was brought up with this devotional framework, right? Now, if you come to the United States, you know, what was July 4? You're celebrating independence from the monarchy in England. You say surrender, going to go, ah! Make sense? So the word by itself already caused an obstruction because most people get stuck in it without understanding deeply. But you also have to understand the reason they feel that way is because of the culture. You see, that's why I always advocate sharpening your mind. One of the main reasons people have suffering in this world is because they don't think. They swallow everything. Something that's shiny, something that's sensational. Oh, yeah. Something that makes them feel good. Even though, and then they leave their brain in the car. They're screwed. What do you think extremism is about? Somebody straps something on you to go kill yourself. You say, oh, really? Okay. <laughs> I remember my teacher saying this. Yeah, you know, when somebody tells you to do that, you go, you do it first. They're going to go, no, 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 I have a bigger mission. Uh-huh, there's your clue. <laughs> You get my point? So the key is really to understand. Now, I know some of you think, yeah, but people overthink something. You have to realize when people say they use the mind too much, they overthink too much, that's actually not what we're referring to. When we say thinking, and we're going back to this, when we say thinking, it means the proper use of the soul 
of the mental faculty. Let's do this again. You have a computer. I'm using the computer to process data, to come out with data coming out that is relevant to whoever I'm talking about, right? So let's say, you know, spreadsheets. I have all this information. I'm processing it because you need a report of, I don't know, profit and, lo profit and loss. So you have all these numbers. Once it's processed, I send it over to you. So I'm the user of this instrument, of this machine, to give this data to you, create this data for you. Make sense? So the speech of the soul essentially is using the mind, which I've covered before. It's actually a very, very vague term. <laughs> mind is actually a composed of your body, your emotions, your thoughts, the tendencies of your chakras. But anyway, go to er earlier lectures. So actually the speech yourself is using, when people say mind, usually they mean the mental faculty. So let's focus on that one. It's using the mental faculty to process this information and then transmit it to the other person. That's what you do. Now, when people go crazy, you go, yeah, but you know, I don't use my mind because I want to use my heart because my mind will screw me up. Okay, All right. What is actually happening is the computer, which is the mental faculty, right, plus the biases, uh, biases of the, the computer, <laughs> the mind, and the emotions with all its, like, I feel this, I feel that, I don't feel good about this, I look at that person, he's ugly, I don't like him, whatever. Just bunch it all together, and you're making that machine make decisions for you. That is the real meaning when people say, oh yeah, but the mind is messing me up, man. I have to use my heart because it's pure. You're oversimplifying. Because when you step back and realize, this is my mind or my mental faculty, these are my emotions, these are my bodies, all of them have their tendencies, but they're nothing more than instruments for me. I control it, not the other way around. So when a person's fanatical, yeah, I'm using my heart. Uh, okay, for the general public, that's good enough, but you guys are more advanced, so I'm going to tell it to you straight. When people are fanatical, when they're using their heart, that's not really what's happening. They're using your emotional body and let it run their life. So if it just so happens that emotional body is tuned into love, compassion, and mercy, then great, fantastic. They go in that right, right direction. But if that emotional body is tuned to anger, trauma, and everything else from the past and mix in with our sharp mind, <laughs> when I say sharp, I say they're good at um, analyzing and what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, rationalizing. You put the two together. You can say when you kill a certain species, it'll save the world. People will believe it. I'm using my heart. You get my point? The key, again, is to know who is using the mind, the emotions, and the body. When you're able to step back and observe the I am is observing the world and using my mind to analyze and understand, using my emotions to be more, what's the word, empathic, to feel, experience, and using the body to execute, to do what needs to be done, then you're in control. Make sense? So when it comes to conductivity and spiritual connection, that's why my teacher always says, same thing, when you come to our classes, even this weekend when we're teaching, you know, achieving oneness with the higher soul, when you go to it in more detail, you know, by the second or third slide, what do we say? You're not obligated to believe everything that is taught. Analyze the information, do your own experiment, and then make your own conclusion. Now, in order to analyze, you have to step back and observe it. Break it down. Look at it in different angles. And from there, test that hypothesis. Does it work? It doesn't work. Go back to your past experience. Yeah, there are more instances that it's right, less instances are wrong. Mm -hmm, okay. And from there, you make your own conclusion. So in other words, when you finish doing that, or as you keep doing that, you start to understand, yeah, this makes sense. Okay, I'll accept that. Oh, this is not. This doesn't make sense. Well, I would start, I'll, I'll withdraw judgment until I do further studying and experience. So as you keep doing that, guess, what hap get, guess what's happening? Your conductivity or absorption of that teaching 
gets deeper and deeper. Make sense? So you're not like surrendering, oh yeah, you know, the earth is flat, the, the sun is also flat, everything is flat, because I feel it. Uh, okay, <laughs> more power to you. <laughs> but if you say, okay, based on my experience, hmm, based on the study and the conclusion of scientists, this is what it came up with. After all, if the earth is really flat, then you cannot have eclipses. <laughs> right? And if you keep flying from one end to the other, you fall off. And uh, you look at all these different scientific, uh, what do you call this, uh, discoveries with instruments, hmm, and they have photographs and all that from other says maybe, and until I'm Jeff Bezos or uh, Richard Branson haven't flown up there yet, I'll have this as a temporary conclusion. Because so far, I cannot prove it, but it's about 90% good. So what are you doing? You're analyzing. And since you cannot really directly experiment, the best you can do is like you look out the horizon and you notice a trick, uh, what do you call it? Um, a boat. Keep going and keep going. At some point, <laughs> it didn't fall off. You just notice the, the top becomes less, less, until you see it. Okay, based on that, I'll make a temporary conclusion that the earth is round. <laughs> you get my point? Now, here's the most important part. It's good as a thought experiment. You know, uh, Einstein came up with the theory of relativity, not because of doing experiments. He did the whole thought experiment in his head. So what happens is this. Until you can actually test it physically, you do your thought experiment. From there, you make temporary uh, conclusions, right? Now, here's the most important part. How much energy and effort am I putting on this? And how much of it does it affect my life? Okay? So if you're going to argue if water is wet, <laughs> yeah, that's important. If you're arguing whether the earth is round or flat, it doesn't really affect you unless you're a pilot. <laughs> right? You get my point? So you have to put things in proper context. This is spirituality and so on and so on. How does it affect my life? If you just sit there and then say, oh yeah, this is it, and you argue and then, and then have a discussion with someone for hours and hours, and you're dead broke, you don't have a job, and that's all you do, I think you better shift your energy. That's what I call pragmatic spirituality. That's that. Okay, so don't be giving me comments here, but I really believe the earth is flat, square, rectangle. Who cares? It's good, you know, if you got nothing else to do, argue and talk about it. I get on a plane, I need to go somewhere. I trust the pilot knows the earth is round. So if I'm going from one place to the other, good enough because I'm <laughs> going to a place to teach. That's what I care. I mean, if you think it's the earth is flat, a round, rectangular, or a block, no power to you. That's called freedom of speech, freedom of thought, and freedom of this and that. Who cares? Doesn't bother me. So spiritual conductivity and conductivity also means you don't swallow everything. It also means you understand, you analyze, and you filter. Now, is it possible that our filters could be screwed up and wrong? Of course. At least the next time, you know what not to, you know what not to think. I know some of you say, yeah, but you know, that, that goes against spirituality and trusting and surrendering to God and all that stuff. That's great and wonderful. But God gave you a brain. So that's why the way my teacher explained it, it's very, very simple. It's called intelligent evaluation. Independent, intelligent evaluation. Don't let people think for you. Even the Lord Buddha with the aura bigger than the planet says, don't believe it just because things have been written in holy books, just because it's known by tradition, it's just because it's believed by experts. And then last thing he says, don't believe it just because I said it. Ta-da! Clear? So I hope that helps. That gives you a bigger viewpoint 
on conductivity. Spiritual connection and conductivity. You're connected. Energy, energy comes down the pipe. And I know some of you go, yeah, I just trust it implicitly. You have to realize one thing. And, I, and after this, we do our meditation. This is just to give you a bigger context, okay? All of us are connected to God. If you don't believe that, uh, go to another channel. <laughs> because we're working with that premise, okay? Anyway, so you have a spiritual connection, like a pipeline. So you say, yes, we are all spiritually connected to God. So therefore, anything that comes in that I download must be correct. Hold your horses. Simple as this. Number one, how big is your bandwidth? You know, remember dial-up? <clears throat> how many years ago? You press something. Okay, the website is loading. Maybe the headline says, uh, I don't know, the world's going to explode. <laughs> Let's say that's what the headline is. But it's a clickbait. But you see, it's so slow. It's loading so slow because your band is so tiny. Oh, yes, oh, the world's going to explode. Then you realize the bottom. The next line says, just kidding. Make sense? So if the spiritual connection is small, you cannot just take it face value because well, the information is still loading. Number two. Let's say the connection is wider, so it's loading very quickly. The question is, how clean is the aura? If the aura has a lot of thoughts, emotions, and biases, even though that information coming in is pure, it is muddied. That's that. You're dead. Make sense? That's why spiritual practice, proper spiritual practice, is consistently, continuously purifying the aura and the chakras and simultaneously widening the connection, increasing the connection upward and downward, Download, upload, bandwidth, <laughs> your aura full of, uh, free of, what do you call this, uh, malware, <laughs> to put it in computer terms. That's why spiritual practice is not just done once. It has to be done consistently, over and over again. This consistent practice to continuously clean your aura, increase the spiritual connection, experience that oneness, is what you call spiritual evolution. That's that. Let's meditate. To the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers, to my beloved teacher, Master Twakok Sui, Mahaguji Meiling, we thank you for divine light, divine love. Thank you for your guidance, help, healing, and protection. Thank you for a discerning mind, a clear mind, a mind that is in control, that is controlled by the higher soul, by my true self. We thank you in full faith, and so it is. All right, let's do meditation to in heart. Left hand, tap your heart. Right hand, tap your crown. Open your palms. Just say, our hearts are one, our souls are one. There's only oneness. Now be aware of your heart in your hands. Fill the earth with beautiful pink light. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Wherever there's hatred anywhere in the world, let me sow love. Where there's injury, let me sow pardon and forgiveness. Where there's doubt, let me sow faith. Where there's despair, let me sow hope. There's so many people right now going through challenging times in their life. Many with our health, with our finances, their relationships, even mental health. Flood all of them with beautiful, loving, pink energy. Bless them with hope and with faith and a better tomorrow. So be it. So be it. Where there's darkness, let me sow light. And where there's sadness, let me sow joy. Just say, our hearts are one, there's only oneness. And in this oneness, may every person, every being be blessed with peace, with love, with the spirit of forgiveness and reconciliation, with hope and with faith, with light and with joy. May all be blessed without exception. So be it. May all be blessed. Continue filling the earth with beautiful pink light. So be it. 
I'll put your hand down. Oh, we're not done yet. <laughs> Raise your hand, spacing out here. Okay, be aware of your heart. Inhale. Let's stimulate the crown. Be aware of your crown. Exhale. Your crown is filled. Our hearts are one, our souls are one, our spirits are one. From the heart of God, through my soul, through my entire being, may every person, every being on earth be blessed with love and kindness. Let all be blessed with great joy and happiness, with understanding, harmony, and divine peace. May all be blessed without exception. So be it. So be it. May all be blessed. Some of you feel the golden light feels different than the pink light. Just let it flow through you. Be aware of your heart. Be aware of your crown. Take a deep breath. Exhale. Imagine even brighter golden light pouring out of our hands. And bless your family with it. Your relatives, your friends the city you live in, the state, the country. Let the golden light just spread everywhere. From the heart of God, may all be blessed with peace, love, and kindness. From the center of the heart of God, through my spirit, through my soul, through my entire being, may all be blessed with compassionate, purifying light, and soothing healing energy. May every person, every being, in every dimension, every direction above and below be blessed with God's unconditional love and kindness. Especially the people who are not kind to us or the people we have hurt, may all of them be blessed with beautiful golden light. May they be blessed with peace, with love, and forgiveness and kindness so be it so be it and so it is now gently put your hands down keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth just keep your eyes closed now imagine a beautiful golden flame floating above your head Be aware of your heart. Feel love in your heart for someone you care about. Feel that love. Just gently rise up to your throat. Rise up to the center of your head. Rise up to your crown. Pass your crown higher, higher. And let that love just enter that beautiful golden flame. Ah. And stay there. Allow your entire awareness and consciousness to just drift deeper and deeper into that golden flame and listen. Oh. drift deeper and deeper into that golden light. Allow your consciousness to 
You just merge with that ocean of golden light. Any sound, any noise you hear would just allow you to merge deeper and deeper into that beautiful golden ocean of light. You are one with that intense golden ocean of light. Be still and let go now. things be now Go deeper in that golden ocean of light.
deeper. Every particle of your being is drifting deeper and deeper into that light, in that ocean of light. You're a droplet of light merging with that ocean of golden light. You become that ocean of light, oneness with all. Let go and just let it happen now. You're not the body, you're not the emotion, you're not the thoughts, you are the soul. You are the spiritual self. You are one with your higher soul, you are one with the divine spark, divine spirit in you. You are one with God, you are one with all. There's only oneness. This is the truth regardless of the capacity of your brain or nervous system to register this truth. You are one with all. Let go, let go. Experience it now. Gently, slowly, come back to your body. Gently move your fingers and toes, gently and slowly come back. Take your time. Raise your hands in blessing. Let's release the excess energy. energy excess energy our bodies cannot absorb. Let's share it with our family, our relatives and friends, people we work with. Just fill them all with beautiful golden light. May all of them be blessed with good health, with happiness, with abundance and prosperity, and spirituality. So be it. May all be blessed, so be it. Blessings be to all. Now be aware of your feet and the base of your spine project golden light down into the earth. Let our beloved Mother Earth be blessed with divine light, divine love, and divine power. Let our beloved Mother Earth be healed, regenerated, and revitalized. Blessings be to Earth. Blessings be to Mother Earth and all her children and all of creation. So be it. So be it. And so it is. Om. Amen. Amin. Tatastu. And so it is. Let's give thanks to the Divine Supreme One, Divine Father, Mother. Thank you to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers. Personally, to my teacher, Master Chokok Sui Mahagu Jumeng, we thank you for immense blessings. In full faith, so be it. Okay, I hope you survived the meditation. You see, when you bless the earth, your, the loving aspect of the soul is so intense that helps the heart open up quickly, the crown open up quickly, well, then more than it is, and that's when you increase your bandwidth. Okay, since you're already there, and you're already conductive, the silence allows faster and more intensive movement of information and energy. Translation, if you want to have clarity, if you want answers to certain questions in your life, Believe it or not, the best way to do it 
is going to deep silence. Shut up <laughs> and wait for the answer to come through. Simple as that. Okay, now, I know you guys are a little spacey, but just hear me out. So this Friday is the full moon, okay? So the 6 p.m. Anchor the Light Meditation is going to be the full moon meditation. We'll kind of put in part of it as emotional healing also, but that's a full moon meditation. And for a lot of you who are new, you say, hey, yeah, I thought only witches and this and that use uh, the full moon to do stuff. Anyway. To be very, very objective, you know, what people call witches and Wicca and all that, it's a spiritual practice. You just got to buy the rap. But if you understand it, they have techniques, they prepare the land, they bless the earth during the full moon, bless the energy beings of the ground so that they'll have the best harvest. But, of course, you know, you don't like somebody, you call them that. So, again, a lot of it has to do with what? Not proper observation. Okay? Just want to clarify. Anyway, so during the full moon, there's a lot more energy pouring down to earth spiritually. And so it has a magnification effect like pouring fertilizer to the ground. So what we try to do during the full moon, instead of letting the negative thoughts and negative emotions and stress energy that a lot of us have because of trying to do stuff get magnified, we use that energy to flush things out and then amplify the good stuff we have. Love, compassion, so on and so on. Make sense? And um, this Friday, uh, the focus will be on the importance or do you need a spiritual coach? All right? In India, this is also called Guru Purnima, a special full moon dedicated to the spiritual teacher. So what we'll do is we'll make it more mainstream, let you understand what it is, and let's make it super, super everyday language. If you have a college professor teaching math to a kindergarten kid, I don't know why he or she would, but let's just say that's the case. Let's say dad is a professor, <laughs> and then the child is five years old. You're trying to teach him something about mathematics. Are you going to sit there and go, by the way, the differential equation of that is this, this, this. No, you won't. What would you do? You put it at the level of the child, right? You go, okay, one marble plus two marbles. You want to, that's three marbles. Yay! <laughs> right? What are you doing? You're stepping down the information. You're transforming that data, right, into more easier, understandable data. Hence, the kid will say, oh, daddy, I understand. Or mommy, or grandma, or whatever. So one of the purposes of the spiritual teacher is to step down the information that he or she has learned through many lifetimes in a way that the student can absorb and learn. Another thing that the teacher does is step down the quality and the intensity of the energy so that by the time it gets to you, you don't get barbecued. So it has to do with conductivity and connection, just like the topic today. But we'll focus it on Friday. Now, you're going to have people that says, Oh, I don't need a teacher. I can do it myself. I don't need someone to help me become my light and I already am. Of course you can. It's just like you want to go from point A to point B. You say, I'll go. Okay. And you go, you hit roadblocks, you hit some, maybe some thieves, maybe some whatever, you know, bumps, some holes in the ground. You eventually get there. But on the other side, you got this other dude that says, you know, yeah. Has anybody gone through that path yet? You know, is a trip advisor, is there a Google thing that somebody's already gone to that place? Give me some tips and tricks so when I go through it, I don't have to go through the pain, I don't have to go through all this. Is there someone who can give me a roadmap so I can get there easier. Someone who's already been there. You know, there's a Chinese saying, if you want, want to know what's at the destination, talk to someone who's been there on the way back. Guess what the teacher is? Exactly. They've already been through the pitfalls of life, of spirituality, and they go, here, do this, don't do that, do this, do this or it's faster. Do this so you have suffering. The student who's conductive will just say, thank you. Both will reach the destination, one with less pain. You decide. That's it. Simple. Right? You know, there's some people who are very egomaniacs. Oh, I can do it myself. You know what the teachers say? The teachers say, go. Learn it on your own. It's just like an egg. Keep banging into a rock and expect the rock to break. <laughs> okay. 
maybe it's a dinosaur egg. Woo, dinosaur egg. Who knows? So, anyway, we will see you tonight, or the second portion of Anchor the Light, and uh, we'll go deeper into stillness tonight. I have a little surprise for you guys, if you want to join me. Uh, we'll go deeper in this oneness, because I think that's what people like. We'll do that tonight, or this morning, wherever you are. And just a quick announcement. Um, Achieving One is with the Higher Soul, if you're in the U.S., that class is this weekend, and registration, I think, closes tomorrow, tonight or tomorrow. I'm not sure. Just go to masterco.org. The information is there. Namaste, everyone. Thank you very much for your patience. I apologize. I know it went over time. The lecture should have been shorter, but me and my big mouth, sorry. So, regardless, we will see you tonight. It will be more meditation. Take good care, and we'll see you later. God bless.